Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today I have prepared two multiple choice questions for you and as usual I recommend you to stop video here, read the questions, answers, choose the correct answers and when you would be ready you can run video again and you can compare your answers with my answers and explanations. And here is the first question. The RNA that cause an R loop to form binds to and here is the four answers to choose from. And first of all, I know that many people uh, don't know what is the R loop or if they know uh, many also confuse uh, template strand of the DNA and coding strand of the DNA. So imagine that this is double stranded DNA and when double stranded DNA would uh, be used in order to make message RNA so these strands of the DNA would separate and one of the strands of the DNA would be used as template strand of the DNA in order to make a message RNA. So we call this strand of the DNA template strand of the DNA and this we call coding strand of the DNA. And uh, I would use the same color for the strand of the DNA as for the message RNA because code of the message RNA would be the same as uh, code of the uh, as sequence of the uh, coding strand of the DNA. For example, if we would have A A C here on the other strand of the DNA, we also would have A A C, and uh, on the complementary strand of the DNA here, we would have uh, T T and G. So this is going to be a complementary strand of the DNA to message RNA and to the second strand of the DNA. And these two strands of the DNA would have the same code, except that when we have, for example, adenine here, we have here uracil and we have zymine here. So, as you see, zymine in this strand of the DNA would be substituted with uracil in the message RNA. Other names of these uh, two strands of the DNA would be, as you remember, if this template strand of the DNA, you may also find that name for this strand is non-template strand of the DNA. And if this coding strand of the DNA, you also may find in the textbooks that this is uh, non-coding strand of the DNA. Also, this would be positive strand of the DNA, and this is going to be negative strand of the DNA. Also, message RNA uh, have not only the same sequence as coding strand of the DNA, but also have the same orientation. So, if this is going to be five prime end, here we have three prime end, and on the coding strand of the DNA we also have five prime end here and three prime end here, and on the template strand of the DNA we have five prime end here and three prime end here. So now when it's clear I will explain you what is the R loop and uh, R loops were find uh, or discovered by Richard Roberts and Philip Sharp in 1976 and uh, 17 years later in 1993 they got a Nobel Prize. So what is the experiment? Imagine that uh, in the early 70s genetics couldn't uh, sequence uh, whole genomes so imagine that here is a genome of the bacteria or virus. They couldn't sequence it and they also couldn't find uh, location of the genes. So what is the experiment where they use uh, double-stranded DNA. Once again, here is a double-stranded DNA and they used message RNA and they mixed a uh, whole genome of the virus with message RNA and what they got later actually the same structure as I show here but I will use a new drawing here so this is double stranded DNA and under certain circumstances under certain uh, temperature uh, message RNA would make better uh, bounding to the uh, template strand of the DNA than uh, coding strand of the DNA. So uh, they got uh, such structures like this one 
and they call this uh, R loop structure here. So this uh, coding strand of the DNA couldn't bind to the uh, complementary strand of the DNA because message RNA had a better affinity with uh, this strand of the DNA. So they got uh, such structures like this one. So how this helps them to get their Nobel Prize? Uh, in next experiment, what they did, they mix uh, the whole genome of the uh, virus with uh, message RNA, and they find that message RNA binded uh, in one place, for example, here, and the other strand of the DNA made a loop like this, that they call R loop. And this was exactly position of the message RNA on the uh, genome of the virus. So now when they have more um, message RNAs, they have been able to predict where this message RNA bind and where this genes that code for this um, message RNA and proteins are located. But this was not their only discovery. Later they discovered that uh, when they use small fragment, uh, like uh, this one, uh, they still can get uh, st loop structures on this fragment. And uh, here is a, a message RNA shown with red color and single-stranded DNA here shown with blue color. So. They have found that their regions, that I will show highlight here, that uh, would have perfect uh, matching. So one uh, fragment, second fragment, as you see, third fragment and fourth fragment, fifth fragment, and uh, sixth, seventh, and eighth. So as you see, there is eight fragments here and uh, one, two, three, four, five, and six loops here. And uh, this picture taken with electronic microscope. So they have found that there are some fragments on the uh, DNA strands that uh, can be uh, found uh, within a gene, but later in message RNA, these uh, fragments would be spliced off. Uh, actually, they are present on the immature message RNA, but later would be spliced off. So they call the structures introns and structures uh, fragments that present in mature message RNA exons. One more time, imagine that this is gene. From this gene, message RNA would be made. And we call this immature message RNA because later uh, it would be shorter because introns would be spliced off. Imagine that this uh, DNA strand has uh, fragments, that is uh, fragments of the introns and exons. So for example, this is first fragment, this is second, third, fourth and fifth. On the immature message RNA we also have the same fragments present here and on the mature message RNA fragment 1 that represent uh, exon would be present, but fragment number 2 that represent uh, intron would be spliced off. Fragment number 3 also would be present, but fragment number 4 that represent uh, intron would be spliced off. So mature message RNA would consist only of the fragment 1, 3, and five. But uh, later, uh, other scientists also find that uh, there are different variants possible. The same gene can produce different variants of the message RNA due to uh, different splicing of introns. For example, here we can find that uh, exon number one can be present, intron can be present too, uh, exon number 3 fragment also can be present and uh, intron number 4 can be spliced off but uh, exon number 5 also can be present. So as you see now we have different 
uh, message RNA. So here we have uh, fragment 1, 3 and 5 and here we have 1, 2, 3 and 5. And as you see different variants also possible. So we may have uh, exon number 1, intron number 2 would be spliced off, then we may have a uh, second fragment uh, exon number 3 and then intron number 4 present and then exon number 5. So as you see we can make uh, here three different variants of the message RNA from single gene. And that explains why we have uh, about 23 uh, thousands of genes, but this 23 thousand of genes can make more than 100 thousand of proteins. Now we are ready to answer our question. The RNA that cause uh, an R loop to form binds to, and as you see, RNA binds to um, template strand of the DNA. We also call this non-coding strand of the DNA. Answer A. And next question. In this experiment, an intron forms a single-stranded region because, and here is the four answers to choose from. Once again, when we uh, hybridize uh, message RNA with complementary template strand of the DNA. Uh, template strand of the DNA would be much longer because uh, this strand of the DNA would include uh, introns. And introns uh, wouldn't be able to bound to the message RNA because in the mature message RNA these fragments are spliced off. And uh, these loops we call introns on the uh, DNA strand and uh, these fragments that bound to the uh, message RNA we call exons. So now we are ready to answer this question also. So answer A, the DNA was not properly denatured and this is not the correct answer. Answer B, the intron is very long. This could be a correct answer because intron have to be long in order to make uh, a loop structure like this. But let's check other answers if we have better answers. Answer C, the intron is complementary to the uh, regions that were spliced out of the RNA. And this is true because as you see introns were complementary to immature message RNA that contained this uh, intron regions but later were spliced off and this is how this R loop structures were formed. And answer D, the intron is AT rich. And this is also true, these regions are AT rich. But as you see, the best answer would be answer C. So, first of all, these uh, structures, R loop structures, are formed because the intron is complementary to the regions that were spliced out of the RNA. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.